I have posted the final exam preview for LW 1230 Business Law right in the news section of the course. So you should be able to see that there. And here, I'll, I'll just work through it just in case you have any uh, misunderstandings or see if we can resolve any misunderstandings. The final exam is what's called a comprehensive exam. So all the course material is going to be covered. However, I, I do finer point it a little bit more than just all the course material. The focus of the material will be on units four, five, and six, okay? So that is the material that we've covered post midterm. The exam's a ways off yet. It is the 27th and uh, it's 9, a, uh, 9 to 11 a.m. That's Newfoundland Standard Time. For you folks who aren't in or aren't, aren't on the island, let's say, um, keep in mind that the times are going to be different. And, uh, you know, if you got any issues with the time, you let me know. And I'm sure we can address uh, it. I have put the standard information in there with regards to what we um, in the other notice I put with regards to exam, uh, with regards to any deferrals or anything. So if you run into a situation, you can't write the exam on that. There is a process. So I've outlined that in a previous note that I posted in the news section. The format for the exam will be two parts. Uh, the, there will be 50 multiple choice questions and there were 70 percent, so they're one point something each. And there will be three short answer questions in space provided. Now here's where the exam, uh, where I fine point, well, what is the exam covering, okay? The 50 multiple choice questions come from across the course. So this is why I use the word course, comp or use the words course comprehensive. This means all of the material we've covered is subject to the multiple choice questions. Now, you've already done a lot of multiple choice questions in the first two exams. So you will, uh, you know, find that a lot of the material there that you've, you've found before, or you've discovered before, you did well with that. So take a look at the, um, take a look at that previous material we've covered from the point of view of, you know, what are some of the major points there. From the new material too that we've covered, the four to six, I would suggest to you that the bulk of the multiple choice questions will come from units four through six, okay? But there will be some spillover. Part B of the exam consists of three short answer questions. Now, these questions are gonna be drawn from a pool. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're, they're basically a, a variety of them that people will get. They, um, We'll focus on post midterm objectives, okay? So that will be the core of the question. The core of the questions will cover the material in units four to six. So even though it's a comprehensive exam, the major focus needs to be on those last three units. What I've done here below this is I have outlined uh, the key objectives that we've covered since the midterm. So there's 15 of them there. You got to understand the concept of agency, the agency relationship, how it's created, basically how it's used and how it ends. So those would be the three points with regards to agency that you should be very aware of. We should describe the responsibilities of the principal and agent. We talked about the fiduciary duty, for example, of of to act on one's behalf uh, in the best interest of the of the principal in the case of the agent. And in case of the principal, the principal has to be responsible to ensure that the agent has the authority to do the things that the agent is doing. So be aware of that. We've talked about that and we'll do that in our review. Explain the concept of and distinguish between the concept of a sole proprietorship, partnership, and a corporation. So when we're talking about there, we're talking about really the three forms of business setup. You need to be familiar with the, the methodology for a sole proportionship, partnership, and a corporation, and the general pluses and minuses, the advantages, disadvantages, some of the concerns, the processes, and uh, why people would pick one over the other. Differentiate between the limited and unlimited liability. Okay, we need to talk about 
what we mean by this and you know what is this concept of a limit to liability and what can you lose what are some of the things and effectively the limit to liability limits you to your percentage of your ownership in the business so if you put a million dollars into the business the best the worst that could happen is you'd lose a million dollars and the unlimited liability means that the liability extends past the business to you personally so this could be a much more uh, detrimental to you in the case you get sued because not only could you lose what you invested in the business but it could affect your personal assets as well okay and discuss the uh, personal tax implications of the basic method of carrying on business we talked about how taxation is addressed in each and basically the sole proprietorship and partnership is taxed as if it's in the individual's hands whereas a corporation is, is taxed uh, as a corporation corporations tend to have lower rates of tax we talked about a limited partner and a general partner. A limited partner is a partner who is limited to their liability. But a general partner is one that is not limited to their liability. And normally, a business has to have at least one general partner. One of the one of the partnership type businesses has to have at least one type of general partner whose liabilities extend beyond their investment in the business into their personal. Compare the advantages and disadvantages of each method of carrying on business. Again, similar to what we've looked at before, you should be aware of the, the pluses and minuses. Discuss some of the difficulties encountered in engaging in international contracts. We talked about international business, and we've seen that, yeah, that can be that can be a little bit problematic uh, with regards to cross-border and rules and the like. Uh, labor legislation, how it affects employment contracts. We've talked about that from an employment point of view and what, what the legislative restrictions are or the legislative minimums are and how it impacts uh, employees and employers. Termination of employment. We've talked about this issue of, okay, we can hire someone. How do we terminate the relationship? What are some of the implications there? And we talk about the different types of termination, dismissal with cause, dismissal without cause, notice, constructive dismissals, wrongful dismissals. You should be familiar with each of those terminologies. 12, we look at the damages for wrongful dismissal and analyze the employment law in terms of this. You know, What are some of the implications to uh, a business owner or an employer in the case of wrongful dismissal. And what does the employment law say with regards to that? 13, we briefly discussed the laws and regulations that affect Canadians when they do business internationally. Again, similar to the one I put up above there. We've talked about that in terms of doing international business. The challenge is that the laws apply to the region you're dealing with. So which jurisdiction that the laws would apply uh, the, the laws that you're working under would be very much dependent on where you're dealing business and what your contract says with regards to whose rules apply. We look at some of the emerging trends in Canadian intellectual property law. And we've, we've talked about this concept of international, uh, sorry, of intellectual property. What do we mean by intellectual property and what are some of the laws surrounding it? So 15 really looks at it even more closely and it says, what are some of the issues with regards to copyrights, patents, and trademarks? And we talked about what the purpose of copyright is, how it's enforced, um, what you know, what are some of the benefits of it, what are some of the issues surrounding it, particularly from the point of view of electronic patents. We differentiate between copyright and patent. Uh, copyright is really a work of art or writing or something like that, whereas a patent is more of a practical product that can have some use. And there the government uh, will give you effectively a monopoly on that product for a period of 20 years if it's unique and original. And these patents serve two masters, really. It protects the individual who built the product, but it also encourages businesses to, to be innovative in order to be able to take advantage of patents in order to reap a return on their investment. And we looked at trademark law as well, logos, these sorts of things, and what sort of protection that provides. So those are the key issues that you really want to look at. Now, keep in mind that these objectives are just post midterm, right? This is not covering the entire course. This is really focusing on the things that happened since the last midterm. And these will be the primary things that will appear here 
in the short answer questions and will certainly be a good chunk of the multiple choice questions. So is that uh, is that clear? Are there any questions on in terms of the format for the final exam? It's worth 40% of your grade. My absolute full intention too is to ensure and again, I gotta be. I want to say this now so that you see it, because I've run into some problems this year and stuff not necessarily being visible to you. I will assure you that before you go into the final exam, you will have all of the grade provided. You submitted them. All of your grades will be available to you, so you'll have a clear understanding of where you sit in the course before you write the final exam. Okay, so there are 60. 40% of the, the final is worth 40%. So of the 60% of the marks, of the 60 marks or 60 points that are available, you will have so many of them and you'll have a clear indication of them in the grade book of where you stand before you go into the final exam. So that that is the overall focus of the exam. And uh, if there are any questions now or if any questions emerge over the course of the next couple of weeks, uh, please email me uh, within the course and I will get back to you immediately because I check this thing every single day, multiple times a day. It's not as if it's going to sit there very long. In the event you don't hear from me because there are instances, believe it or not, it happens every once in a while, where there are instances where stuff gets by me because I inadvertently click a button and I don't see something and it gets marked as red and I didn't see it. Has happened before. Uh, if you don't hear back from me within the day, please get a hold of me again any way you can. All my contacts are there. So email me through my email, phone me. I don't care what you do. Just make sure you get a hold of me. That's that's a trigger. 